Hey everyone, so in this video I want to show a little breakdown on the scene that I have done on the relight of the Mirka demo uh, that is shared by Epic Games uh, because I saw that so far it has created a lot of discussions about what is good and what is bad that there isn't an answer on that it's most likely what a person likes and what a person doesn't like or what it could be adjusted and what could not be adjusted or what is blended and what is not like like we can go like forever on those topics but the idea is showing why i did it which one were the faults behind it and the technical side on how I have approached because that one was a lighting study. I learned a lot on how to use a real engine on the cinematic side. And that scene was the perfect fit uh, because it has all the stuff that are needed for a cinematic. Uh, but yeah, like enough talking, let's go directly to the scene. I will divide the video in parts so that you can see the specific parts every time you need it okay so let's go forward with it as we can see <coughs> in the shot sorry there are several lights we have a fill light we have a rim light we have a negative light now we'll go to see what it is and a spotlight so first of all let's see the rim light and the real name it, it's used to explain the idea. So the idea was to create a hotter effect of the area compared to the original one. And uh, by doing that, I just pumped up the values on the highlights. And yes, I have burned the pixels. And that one was a need. And that one also was the purpose of the test itself. So seeing how much I can push further with those values because we are always um, used of seeing really dark values because our eyes uh, in a really primal way are embedded to do it so to catch more on the darker values part of the curve uh, of the tone mapper curve than the one in the really high lights because they go further than what we can actually see and we see those burned pixels and that one was the most likely the whole purpose of the test. So see how much I can push further in order to obtain to my eye something that looks more believable in terms of real life. That doesn't mean it's looking better, but it's more like real life style. Okay. And by being conscious of burning those pixels, because I didn't do it by mistake. Let's be careful of saying that it's not by, done by mistake, but because I wanted to do it. Then if it's good or not, again, choices. So sorry if I go with those tangents, but let's, let's go forward with the technical part. Rim light. Uh, in here, I just use a rectangular light to make a more uniform type of rim light on the meerkat. As you can see, whenever also it goes upper, if I remove it, you see that it's really a small type of rim light that still works. But in my case, I wanted to increase it to have this kind of really nice four bright effect, you know, just to have more silhouettes on one side, even if it was the opposite, most likely, because the light is like pointing in these ways from behind so that you have this shadow and in here I wanted to emphasize more this side of the meerkat okay because it felt better to me then I used the fill light and the fill light is was used in this particular case scenario whenever the meerkat was going near the egg that one was the result without the fill light and into my eye it was looking a little bit too much off and uh, because, of course, Lumen is doing some some really good progress, but sometimes it doesn't give enough bounces because this one is a really, really small bounce. And just the fact that it could give to us all these bounces around 
at these FPSs, by the way, I have a 3090 and one i9 uh, CPU, so quite big machine, but at the same time, possibility to render all this stuff with these two techniques, like Lumen and ray tracing, that it's Lumen using a hybrid ray tracing, so it's not full ray tracing, but it's not the video to speak about it. And Nanite as well, then I'll show you up. It's it's incredible. It's really incredible. So in here I use this fill light to fill more of the face of the character. And to do that, I use a technique that probably most of you already know that is called lighting channels. And lighting channels basically gives you the possibility to uh, light an, uh, an object by dividing it into different channels or if you want to compare it to something like uh, Photoshop you can say uh, layer okay so we say okay these objects that is in this case the meerkat will be in the channel one and also in the channel zero so the channel zero is the default one of Unreal to light uh, objects and we add also the, the channel one so that whenever we need it we can add some lights that will interact with only objects that are in the channel one. Okay, as you can see here, now we have it, right? And that one was really fundamental for me and I use it also for the rim light and the other lights that I used so far to illuminate only the Mirka to emphasize certain areas or certain parts of it, okay? And then we have the negative light. So negative light is nothing incredible is just a light that I have used to eliminate some bounces. And you say, why are you eliminating if you want to use a real-time GI? But yeah, sometimes you want less because you want to have more contrast by still having a surrounding that gives you a good amount of indirect lighting. And because of that, I use a technique that is really old, like it's ancient, used in photography by using black planes, okay? And this black plane, in this case, specifically, was giving to me more contrast on the egg. Now I will turn it off and you can see the leaking here in this particular area of the egg that now is less, okay? If we see it from the perspective, you can see that there is slightly more contrast. Again, this is a test, this is a lighting test is a study, so it's not a final product. So all these kind of small bits were added to study those different techniques, okay? So you say, oh, yeah, I don't see the difference. Why are you doing that? It's useless, probably, but that was my test. And to me, it was looking good. The fact that I could control the bounces in the area. So if I wanted to create even more contrast physically, I can take the plane and uh, move it more nearby the object and have even more contrast, okay? So to me, having this kind of possibility right now, it's like incredible, okay? So I can illuminate whatever I want, how I want, and then I can eliminate what I don't want. That is insane. Previously, without uh, real-time lighting techniques, was not possible at all. And then, last thing that I have changed so far in here were the shadows. So, in here I use the virtual shadow map, the new virtual shadow maps, because they work really nicely with the nanite objects. But at the same time, they have not issues, because I would say this is an art directable parameter. And the parameter itself is the sampling bias. The sampling bias is, as it says, uh, bias, where you can tell the distance of where it has to calculate the distances between two objects or more, okay, for the shadowing. The default one is seven, okay? And now if you look carefully at this part of the egg and I put the value zero one, that is the one that I used so far, you can see that there is less leaking of uh, bounces. And again, these are directable because then people can say, no, I want more bounces. I like it. Why are you removing it? 
that's amazing. <laughs> Leave it as it is. <laughs> so everyone can choose whatever looks good for them. Okay, so in here, for example, I was having more shadowing as well. So if I put it at seven, you can see more bounces. If I put it to point 0.1, you can see less, so to me it was looking better because it has a more uniform type of shadowing, but again, it's a choice, so everyone can choose whatever type of techniques to use for the shadowing in here as well. To me in here it was looking too much detached, instead I used this parameter, okay, to make it more uh, occluded from the bottom, all right? So then, Let's go fast forward uh, in here, just to give uh, a little bit of context on why I have burned those pixels. And what was the concept behind it? I will go really fast. In here, the concept was, okay, so this one is an animal. In real life, what should I do to capture this animal? So probably I will lose a really long lens, so a really high uh, millimeter. Okay, so for example, in this case, I probably use 100 millimeters. Yeah, if I'm correct, should be, oops, yeah, 100 millimeters. And uh, a really small focal uh, aperture. So small aperture is equal to a lot of light entering to the lens. And it is almost midday and the light is striking so much, and the colors are really bright, and you can get something like that, also in real life. Then in a real case scenario that is different than real life, what, sh what you will do will be taking the raw shot and adjust the brightness, right? Because you say, no, it's bird, I want to show those details. <coughs> Sorry. In my case, I didn't want to show those details. I wanted to hide them, but on purpose, okay? If it makes sense, because it's not always about showing up everything, but it's also about what you want to show. And in my case, I wanted to show this kind of, te of technique, okay? Of burning sometimes those pixels. Sorry. So... Uh, this is quite a video that is likely we are in live, okay? So it's not montage, but I will divide all the parts indeed. So in here you can see, you know, those burdened pixels in here because the camera is really close and the aperture is really open. So then let's go to the eagle. Uh, in here I have used the new local exposure over real. So we can take a look at it in here. If I select the camera and we go to local exposure, we can see all the parameters that I have changed. If I remove those, you can see that it is flatter. And in order to gather more details, I use the detail strength. So basically it gains more contrast to the scene, okay? Without losing the look of burned pixels and so on that I have mentioned before also in the sky. And by the way, I didn't use uh, manual exposure, but compensation and the normal real engine EV, sorry, exposure, no physical values, because it still gives uh, issues with the lumen, so it's not really working well. Then we have the Eagle, so that one was really nice, and it gave me the possibility to search so many stuff. For example, one important one is this one. So if I go out from the shot and I see the behind the scene, here it is, what is happening in there. You say, what in the hell is happening? So is happening this. If I remove those two black plane that are like our famous negative light, this is what happens. You see the eagle is illuminated like it's really near the ground. Instead, I wanted this look like it was really far, okay, from the actual camera, and it was going towards us with a, uh, with a lens that was really high, okay? 
so a really long lens because the object is far that's why we see the clouds very nearby us but at the same time i didn't want to see the actual bounces okay on the eagle so in one shot where i couldn't do it and i still have to find a way is in this one where i couldn't place the planes otherwise they were visible during the shot so in here you can see the bounces and to me this one looks bad and i didn't know how to modify it so if you have an idea please tell me uh, because i couldn't hide and remove at the same time the bounces like i can do it by adjusting the object or composite it but i wanted to do everything inside of unreal i can do something like that in nuke or whatever other software but i didn't want to <coughs> so in here we have the mirka trying to escape and in here it's also quite cool i would say because we always have used the plane but if i move you can see that the plane scales down and by scaling down that's what happens so the plane is quite big in here and there are no bounces whenever the plane starts to scale down you can see we start to reveal the bounces it's a really really subtle uh, detail but that's what i wanted i wanted to give the perception to the eagle from coming towards the the camera or the meerkat in this case but by also using uh, the bounces okay and that was the technique so i used the bounces to represent that kind of effect okay and in here by the way you can see the transmission it is looking quite nice uh, from the lights and uh, other parts uh, yeah whenever the eagle answer with the head inside so in here you can see this scene it was like quite painful to illuminate because in those small spaces where there is these big changes doesn't work really good in fact i had to remove the sky lighting actually like the light ambient was completely removed because it was misbehaving like so so much and this is where like you see if i put it to one it's like craziness okay so and this is where ray tracing because the original one is rendered with brute force ray tracing okay and brute force ray tracing is tracing every single polygon every single mesh then it's optimized in so many several ways with bvh and so on but it's tracing every object that is different from lumen that instead is tracing volumes and again it's not a technical speech about lumen so if you want more infos you can search it online but yeah that one was the issue in fact i uh, removed completely the skylight i couldn't use like a fake light now that i'm thinking to have more blue light from here but that's okay i did it so you see light study never perfect and in here you can see the jump of light because if i stay in this shot and i go out you can see the scene has a really low lighting intensity and the exposure is doing the job okay so now we go here outside outside the eagle was illuminated normally with the lights uh, with some field lights um, in here probably i have it rectangular light yeah this one was feeling behind this other one was feeling in front yes was adding a little bit more light in the front of the eagle okay and instead in here i used it to emphasize more the transmission effect on the on the on the eagle itself okay you can see in here on the floor and the eagle by the way is the the heaviest thing to render in this scene because the amount of strands guys is it's just no sense okay it's like million of them just for this character like each one of them is a polygon okay so it's it's crazy and the fact that i could render it with a 3090 at these fps with nanite millions of polygons 
uh, virtual shadow maps, lumen, real-time lighting, it's just no sense. Even at these FPSs, guys, it's, it's no sense, okay? So we have to put it in perspective, indeed. Uh, one last thing is the shadowing. So the shadowing, unfortunately, is not really good for the fur. Uh, at the moment in Unreal, I couldn't find a way to make it work nicely with the virtual shadow map because <clears throat> the ray tracing one are behaving better, basically. So if I enable them, you can see how they are behaving really smoothly. Still, they change it a bit and it's not super, super precise, but indeed it's better than using the virtual one that are working good whenever you are far from it because it's, I don't know, probably optimizing and voxelizing the, the different strengths. But in here you can see how smooth they are. But unfortunately in this version, they are misbehaving with uh, Nanite. Okay, so the ray traces shadow, I'm saying. And it's quite bad because now you can see ray traced shadow in front of this object, 100 FPSs. Virtual shadow map in front of this object, 64 FPSs. Okay, so big jump. Uh, uh, ray traced shadow are insane. So they give you so much more performance uh, gain. And yeah, I think in terms of rendering, specifically for the various scenes, we are good. So I show up everything and yeah, like it, it was a study and I wanted to check how to create certain type of effects and which one were the techniques to use it for creating that effect. And then we can speak a little bit about Nanite. <coughs> so I changed the scene. Uh, some people have noticed it, others no. So if you have not noticed, it's good because it means I did it good. <laughs> If you have noticed it heavily, it means that probably I didn't do it really good and that's fine. So as you can see in here, we have so, so many more objects. Like the amount of polygon in this scene, guys, is, is just no sense, okay? And I added also these really, really small, like look how small they are and how many polygons they have. It's like crazy. So you can see this is the old assets used for the demo. This is the assets that I added, okay? And I didn't try techniques like vir uh, virtual texturing that could also help, okay? So this is an old asset, for example, that is used, that uses displacements and is super heavy. And this one is one of the Nanite one. And by the way, all the textures are 8K EXR, okay? And they have millions and millions of polygons, each one of them that you see with a nanite. And also those small rocks, and yeah, in here I just went crazy because I was also lazy. They also have an insane amount of polygons. They use an 8K texture. <laughs> so it's it's quite crazy, and I went wild because... Yes, I don't care. And I wanted to see how much I could push without thinking about technicality, but more like lighting and create what I wanted to create, actually. Okay. So that one was the objective, how to approach it like a movie production, not anymore like a, only a video game. And the possibilities with uh, Unreal Engine 5 are just crazy. Like if the people start to use it and try it is just no sense how many stuff now at this moment are <clears throat> possible to do with uh, these tools like a real engine 5 it's just completely crazy like the fact that now i can see this scene in this way and it's going to 35 fps's okay so 27 fps's this scene rendered in this way only in real time is just no sense. It's just crazy. Okay, but that one could be only probably me going that crazy for that. Probably other people says, no, yeah, it's normal. It's you that you are crazy errors, but it's okay. 
So, yeah, I would say that's all. Uh, I don't think we have to take a look at other stuff. If you have any other questions about it, or well, if you want to see other stuff uh, about the rendering, or I don't know, other stuff as well, because the render took five minutes in total, and in the original it was taking more than one hour, and it was using TSR, and it was using the basic Unreal Engine setup. So nothing fancy, no super high quality values before and after the render. So it was all what, what you see is what you get, basically. And that's really nice, actually, because we have the real perception of what we are doing so far. So, yeah, thank you very much again. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.